It's a question that lots of people wonder about. When is the best age to start filing for Social Security? Wealth strategist and tax attorney Rebecca Walser is back to discuss. Rebecca, this hits home because my parents are having this exact same debate. Absolutely. And obviously, we cannot tell broadly everybody this is the answer. There oh, is shoot. no. Well, then what are we doing, Rebecca? <laughs> We're done. That's right. There's no exact answer um, for when you should file. Everything is specific you know case by case specific but what I will tell you are some generalities around the three age groups so the first thing are there really are three choices you okay. can file early at 62 okay. so that's choice number one the second choice is you can wait till full retirement age or what we call FRA and that now is usually 66 in some months eventually it will go to 67 so that's what we call FRA full retirement age that's option number two Option number three is to defer and file and start taking benefits at 70, at which point what happens between full retirement age, your second option, and 70 is that your benefit is supposed to compound annually by 8%. Okay. So if you defer, you're actually going to raise your benefit by age 70. So those are our three options, which okay. we need to understand. Now let me just tell you generally what I will tell, what I tell everybody, but we actually can run a social security analysis report for someone coming in and really get their case by case specific mm -hmm. information. The first thing I will tell you is try not to file early at 62 unless you've retired and you absolutely need that as an income source. And the reason for that is you will literally earn through Social Security thousands and thousands less by filing early. When you file early, you get a reduced benefit from what you would get at full retirement age. So filing early basically means you will invariably for the rest of your life earn thousands less. Um, but that's general. Some people might say, well, my life expectancy isn't much beyond 60, so why would I wait till full retirement age when I can take it 62? There are individual cases that make sense. But I'm curious, if you are going to get it early and you're going to have more months of receiving the Social Security, wouldn't that equal more in the long term? Or you're saying it'll be a bigger payment the longer that you wait that counteracts how much longer you're taking it. So it's a, it's, your, your point is exactly why it's case by case, right? So what happens is by taking at 62 versus full retirement age, that difference is only four years and the benefit is so much less that okay. in fact it's not going to be more even though it's four years earlier. Of course, generally speaking. Generally okay. speaking, please, okay. please understand this is, it's always specific case by case. Now what I will tell you is any financial software will tell you you will absolutely get your highest payout over time if you wait and compound till age 70. The problem with that is that it just does not actually take into consideration individual circumstances. If you have somebody who says, you know, I think I'm going to be older and I'm not going to want to travel when I'm later, when I'm like mid 70s, mm -hmm. so I want to take it when I'm full retirement age and I want to tra travel and enjoy it now. I don't want to wait till I'm 70. Mm -hmm. The absolute number always is if you wait till 70 and you live a long life, you will ultimately make more because the amount that's the difference, but you have to live into your mid 80s, Natalie, to actually make that difference. So you have to look at the longevity of your parents and see kind of what your life, what you expect to live to and what you believe really is powerful. What you believe, I had a client once who told me I'm going to die at 73 and I was like, okay, you know, and I'm like oh. writing that down <laughs> because scary. what you believe is what probably will, your mind is very, very powerful, believe me. So um, you have to look at what your individual circumstances are. You can't just say, and financial advisors should not tell you, well, if you, you should wait till 70 because you'll, you'll earn more. Let's talk about your individual circumstances. And I will say, I'm kind of curious and I'm kind of combining different topics that we've talked about. You talked about in the past that, the, that we are so far under, we are so deficient when it comes to the future. What if someone says, well, Rebecca, if we're so much in debt on Amen. this, Amen. shouldn't we take advantage of it you now? You are oh, preaching to the choir, Natalie. <laughs> Let me tell you, we have one more graphic, and we want to talk about that, because what you just said hits the nail on the head if we do have that second graphic. But what, what is interesting is we've had something called file and suspend in the Social Security arena, and you can see this is an AARP article here. If you have not filed, if you did not file and suspend by last year, May 1st of 2016, you can't do it anymore. And this is what we're starting to see now, are these red flags of changes happening in filing for Social Security that have never been the case as long as the program's been wow. in place since 1935. So yes, the third consideration is take more as soon as you can because of the fact that we just don't know how long we're going it's to have these around. programs. Well, again, this is all general. The point is you want to call Rebecca so she can answer your specific questions and help with your specific needs. There's her phone number. There's her website. Thank you again. Thanks, Natalie.